Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Con Help Desk. Today I'm going to be talking about money management and how to budget yourself during a convention. So one of the main ways to manage your money is the same way you would in regular day, you know, regular daily life. So that would be like your bank account, um, if you have a bank account. Uh, you would normally have a checking and a savings. The checking account is specifically for what you normally spend throughout the month or you know per paycheck or whatever and then your savings account is uh, what you would use to save up would that what it sounds like a savings account you're saving um, you're saving up for something usually um, usually savings accounts are used for college or getting a new car or you know something something it's you know more valuable than going to a convention um, something practical but uh, if you don't have to worry about that if you uh, if you already have a place to stay, uh, you know you have your own place, or you live with your parents, or whatever. You're not, you know, you're not to the age yet where you really need to worry about moving out. Uh, you have a good-paying job, you have a car, you know, all that stuff. You don't, you don't need to save for anything. Uh, you can use that savings account part of your bank to save up for conventions. Um, personally, I don't do that. Um, I don't have a savings account on my bank. Uh, it's literally just a checking account and nothing more. My bank has the option to uh, use one or the other, and I always choose to just do checking because savings, I always forget the stuff in there, and I just never use it, so it's not worth it. Um, but that's one way to do it, but I do have another way, another way that's pretty easy, unless you normally use your card. Um, so this is for all those people who don't use a bank, or don't, uh, don't have a checking account of any kind, or, or whatever. So the second method, uh, like I said, it's what I do. Um, if you have a trusted uh, relative or something like that, or someone in your house, um, or just if you can trust yourself not to spend the money, um, put it away somewhere. What I do is um, I give it to my mom when I can. Um, I give it to her. She puts it in an envelope that has my name on it, and then it builds up over time, and if I ask her for money, then she won't give it to me. Um, if it's in my room, there's a good chance I'll grab it and use it. So if you're like me, or whatever, and you spend money like crazy, it's a good idea to give it to somebody you trust, who can hold onto it for you, that you know won't spend it or steal it. And put it away, and then you gradually build it up as you go along. You put like $25 or $50 or something, or whatever you want, um, each paycheck. Uh, for me, it used to be like $50 every check when I was working. Um, I'm not really working as much now, so I can't do that. But then again, I'm not really buying things at cons much anymore. Um, and then if I do, I usually come into money through like selling stuff. Like uh, I'll sell. My, I have a bunch of anime that I'm getting rid of that um, I got at a. Uh, uh, I got in this big lot, and a bunch of it I didn't want, so I'm just selling it all. Um, and you know things like that, or my old figures that I don't care about anymore. I sold some of those, got some money, that's how I paid for KamoriCon. So that's how I pay for things, is I sell things so that I can get some money. Um, and then I do commissions on the side too for wigs and props and you know, things like that. But uh, the money that I do make, I put into that envelope, or I have my mom put it in the envelope, and she puts it in a drawer in her room where I can't get it, so I can't spend it. So it's a good way to, you know, save money. So well, there's only one more part of really before the convention. And it doesn't have to do with saving, though. Um, it it sort of does and sort of doesn't. Um, but it's your other expenses. You have to remember those. Um, a lot of people go to conventions with, like, tons of money. And they don't remember that they got to spend money on food and gas. And then they're like, oh, well, now I need money to get home. And now I don't have money. And things like that. And you got to really think about your other expenses. So um, look around um, before you go to the convention. Look around and, uh, like, if you can get to the area, like to the location, if you can just drive there, like, on a day off or something, uh, just go there and look around and see what's around. Um, there are a lot of, like, uh, fast food restaurants, if that's what you're into, um, maybe Denny's, something like that, you know, just a regular restaurant. There are other places like that that aren't too expensive. Um, if you're in a convention center or you're eating the food supplied by the convention 
for the event, um, that's expensive. Uh, I know that at SoccerCon, on the first floor, there's a cafe, and it was kind of a cafe, I guess, and their stuff is a lot more expensive than it should be. Um, but that's expected because you're at, you know, it's, it's convenience. It's like when you go into a convenience store, um, you can go to the dollar store and get a soda for a dollar, but you can go into um, 7-Eleven and it's going to be like two dollars for that same soda because it's a convenience store. You're paying for it being there while you're doing something else. You normally go into a dollar store to buy stuff for a dollar. You know what you're, you know what everything is. You go into a convenience store, they raise the prices because they're like, oh, well, while you're here, why don't you get a soda? And you're like, but it's too much. And you're like, yeah, but you don't have to spend the gas to go somewhere else to get that soda. And then now you bought that soda that's a dollar extra. And you, you wasted money. So that's kind of the, the way that they look at it when, um, when they're doing these kind of things. Like the um, Komori Con. Inside the Hilton Hotel, they have a little thing set up with people giving out food. And actually, they do it at Soccer Con too. Up on the fourth floor, if you go through the doors instead of going outside into the courtyard, if you go through the doors, there's a main stage and stuff. And then on this side, up against the windows, there's uh, uh, food, like a like a food stand, like a food bar. And um, it's like two dollars for a can of soda. And they know that you're already up there. You're not gonna walk somewhere else to go get a soda. They're like, well, I'm hungry. There's food right here. I'll just buy this, you know. And there's, you're spending two dollars on a 12 ounce soda when a dollar store you could go get a soda for a dollar and it's twice as much, almost twice as much soda, 20 ounce can or 20 ounce uh, bottle, and you're you're paying twice as much basically. You're paying over twice as much for a can. So it, you know, you got to look at it that way. Uh, and actually, yeah, they are 20 ounces. I have a Pepsi bottle here. Um, so yeah, that you're paying over twice as much and it's crazy and you shouldn't have to do that. So the other thing is gas. Um, it depends, this only really matters for people who are going back and forth from like home to the convention and home to the convention. Um, and they're not staying in a hotel that's nearby or if they're not staying in a hotel, you know, you know what I mean. Um, if you're not in walking distance basically of the, of the convention, you have to remember how much gas is going to cost. Uh, go in the area while, when you get there. Um, when you first get there, look around before you do anything else. While you're looking for maybe a piece, uh, place to park, you can look at the gas stations around. See what they cost. Um, kind of think about how much you're going to be spending uh, getting there and back every day. Um, and how much you're going to need for that. If you're going like Friday, you go, spend the day there, then you leave and you go home. I mean, chances are you're, you're not going to use that much money anyway because... You didn't bring a shit ton of money like someone in a hotel would who's not going home and can't just store their money somewhere. So they don't have the money just on them to go spend. But you gotta remember though still, you, you still gotta put that, you know, uh, you just, I still gotta say it. And the last one is the hotel. If you if you are in a hotel, you should already know what you're gonna pay. Depending on how many people are, what I do is I take the hotel cost, the complete cost, like in, in the receipt in your email, to tell you the full cost, or if you, um, uh, call the hotel, they should be able to tell you what the exact cost is and with tax and everything. Um, and then you just divide that by how many people are there and you find out how much you're paying. And then that's all you have to worry about for a hotel really. And then just make sure you have that. Um, if it's on your debit card, make sure all the money's on the debit card before you leave. And then if you're paying somebody to stay in their hotel, just make sure you have that much on you so that you can just give it to them. I round my things. Like if it's 96.50 something like 96 dollars and 50 cents i'll just say it's 96 dollars and then if it's like above 50 cents i'll just say it's the next up so i just round to the nearest um five or whatever the nearest half dollar um i just round you know and um it, it makes it easier so that i can just get dollars and then um if you are that person who has to take money from people bring change too uh just in case just i just throw that out there just bring change It'll help. So I think we've pretty much covered everything that has to do with your other expenses because I think that's really it. Um, because I'm going to be talking about the next part, which is it could be considered your other expenses, but this is really what you're spending your money on at a at a convention, and that's merchandise. Merchandise. This shit. 
So if you're like me, you want to buy all of them. But you can't. So you gotta pick which ones are the ones you really want. So there's a lot of people who don't know that for some reason they don't understand that the vendors who bring these things to sell, um, who bring all the figures, they have multiple of that figure. That's not the only one. Or well, not usually, anyway. The only ones that I've ever had that problem with were Ritsu, Yui, and Kuro. Those are the only ones that I've had that problem with out of everything I've ever bought at a convention. Those are the only ones that there was only one of. That's because K-On is... Nobody watches K-On anymore. Nobody really cares about K-On anymore. So they don't really sell any of those anymore. And, well, I guess my Yui keychain here, too. Um, but that's just a keychain. They usually don't have too many of the same keychain because there's so many of them. Um, there's so many keychains. Um, those two, actually, were the only ones left, too. But those are rare. So that's, um, that's different. Um, but this one... And those two were, um, they're not rare. You can pretty much get them anywhere. Um, they'll be at other conventions, but they just, this one just happened to only have one of them. And, um, well, this one's a special edition. Um, so that it's kind of, kind of rare, but not really. Uh, but, uh, these two right here, the, the Card Captor Sakura and the Lyrical Nanoha, uh, those were, those are rare can't really find those anywhere so that's why I bought those when I did um, I made sure to buy rare ones and I bought them as I bought them but they're also not very popular anymore so nobody's gonna buy them I bought Sakura on uh, Sunday of Akigon so it was the very last day and it was right before we left so no nobody had, I don't even think anyone touched it or looked at it because like the guy looked at me like is someone actually gonna buy that <laughs> finally like like, nobody cared about it. So I was like, I'll, I'll get it. I love this. I'll get it. Um, but unless it's rare, there's a chance that they're going to they're gonna have a bunch of them. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to pretty much just ask them. Just go up and say, how many of these do you got left? And tell them, tell them uh, you're not looking to pay anything right now. You're not looking to buy anything right now. You just want to know how many are left because you want to come back. Like, if you explain to them really... Sometimes you don't even have to explain to them, but sometimes you do because they'll they'll try to sell it to you right there. But explain to them that you don't you don't want to buy anything right now. You want to make sure you're you're um, careful with your money. Maybe you say you don't have that much, even if you do. You say like, oh, I don't have very much, and I need to watch my spending. So I need to I need to buy stuff on Sunday. And it's just say I'm coming back Sunday to do all my shopping. I'm just doing. I'm just looking around to make sure things are still here. And you know, on Sunday I'm gonna buy them if they're still here. Then they're they're gonna be like, okay, well they're not paying for anything until then anyway, so I might as well. Yeah, we have more of them. We have four more of that. You know, um, so they're gonna tell you usually if they have more because if if it's for sure that you're doing your shopping on one specific day, especially the last day, then they want that sale still. They still want it. So they're going to tell you how many they have to see to show you that there's a chance that when you come back, they're going to have it and they're going to get your business. Um, I've worked retail enough to know that that's kind of how it works. But if they only say, like if they're like, if they're adamant about that's the only one they got, uh, you can like, uh, you know, look over the counter um, and you can see in the boxes. Um, usually Friday afternoon or Friday uh, or Saturday morning, I mean. Um, Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, something like that. They're gonna have start having the boxes open a lot, um, and you can see what they have extra in the back, um, and you can see if there's extra of that one. If you don't see any, ask them and just be sure. And if they really don't have any, then it's justifiable, I guess. If it's like your favorite character, or if it's like a really rare one that you'll never see anywhere, like the um, Nanoha one, then I've never seen that at a convention. <laughs> at all so if it's something like that then yeah buy it if you if you have the money and you think it's justifiable to buy it buy it um but that's i guess it kind of makes it kind of hard to save money that way that's why i said it's sort of difficult but sort of not so the last thing on my list is backup money um it's always good to have like em emergency money think of it as emergency money um like let's take my money for instance Take a twenty dollar bill. Let's take a take a twenty dollar bill. If you have a wallet like mine, it has two 
two money pouches. See that? Two money pouches in there. Take your emergency money, put it in the back. Take the rest of your money, put it in the front. I don't know how well you guys saw that, but that's that's what I do. I put the emergency money in the back and the regular money that I'm going to be spending in the front. Um, I also have this wallet. It's they call it the magic wallet. It's got elastic in it, but um, this way it has an X here and two lines there. Flip it over. And it's got the X on this side and two lines on that side. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty neat, and um, what I do is I put my ID in here, and then I put my uh, uh, debit card in here, and then my um, uh, I uh, what is that emergency money? I fold it up and put it in this first one, so I know where it is. Um, so that's that's a good way to um, keep your backup money with you um, without having to have a bunch of space taken up because this wallet gets nice and heavy and like I don't use any of these things that are in here basically except for my ID um, I have like a Sally's Club card uh, my insurance card my Orca card for the bus things like that and you don't need that in your wallet when you're at a convention um, unless you, you, know, you take the bus but you know then you got the Orca card but I mean like I don't even use that stuff I'm at a hotel I'm in walking distance I'm not using it so what I do is I keep my actual wallet uh, in a locking suitcase and I keep the key with me lock the suitcase with it in it and have everything that I need in this wallet the smaller one so that's a good way to uh, keep emergency money on you and keep it light but it looks like that's it I don't really think I have anything else to talk about if you guys have any questions about this please ask me and I will answer it like I said in the end of the last episode when I introduced this episode I am very bad with money and I'm probably not the best person to explain this. So if you guys have any questions that I can probably ask somebody else, maybe, um, or if I don't, if I don't even know the answer, then I'll obviously ask somebody else, and I can, you know, I can get a better answer, a better explained answer. Um, I might actually, um, if I need to, I might have Atlas like do a, a questions uh, segment with me with the answer to some of these questions. So that would be helpful to you guys. Hopefully, it'll be helpful to you guys. Anyway, uh, episode three is going to be photo shoots, and I am going to explain only in very small detail the running and hosting of a photo shoot because I've already covered that, and I will link to the video that I talk about that because um, I've already made that video, the how to run a photo shoot. It's called So You Want to Run a Photo Shoot, and I've already done it, so in that episode, I'm going to do the whole look over here, click here to go to that video thing. So that will be for that episode. Uh, that's it here. So like and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you happen to like this and my other videos, why not go over to Twitter and give me a follow, at J underscore cause. And while you're there, use the hashtag JTopics to give me suggestions for videos or ask me questions for a Q&A. As well as you can use hashtag JReacts, and you can give me suggestions for videos to react to since now I can do that. All right, have a good one and see you guys later.